Hello and welcome into the Inside Nebraska YouTube channel. I am Greg Smith, Senior Recruiting Analyst here at Inside Nebraska, and we are back. Uh, I, would, I was going to say football season is here, but I'm enjoying yeah. it. It's not. Uh, recruiting season is here, though. My time to shine, right? Uh, I'm joined mm -hmm. once again, as always, by staff writer Steve Mark, and today was cord not coordinator day. I can't talk today. One of them was. Uh, one, one of them was a special teams coordinator, mm -hmm. uh, Ed Foley, and defensive line coach Terrence Knighton. Um, those two guys spoke to us for the first time in the media, uh, coming to the, the, the podium press conference mm -hmm. setting. Um, we, we got to hear a lot. 26 minutes from Ed Foley, about 13 minutes or so uh, from Terrence Knight. And I guess, Steve, you, you get first pick where, on where you want to go. What were your overall thoughts of the day? Well, it's got to be uh, Ed Foley and just the people person that he is. Mm -hmm. um, the he, He's really good at creating relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just think he's an excellent ambassador for when he's traveling across the state. We've all seen his social media yeah. posts. He's hitting up all the small towns, it seems, in, in Nebraska and, and um, doing work on that front. I think he's just a really good ambassador for the staff and, and what they're trying to build and create here at Nebraska. He's just a, a down-to-earth dude that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy um, watching and, and you know whenever there's a next whenever there's the next um, really good prospect in the state of Nebraska I think Ed Foley is going to be one of the first ones yeah. to go say hi and everything so I, I just think that um, you know in, in Foley and especially Terrence Knighton too people per, people um, um, persons they're, they're just very very good at what they do and you know I, I just think that they're very good at creating relationships and we saw that today when, when they were talking to the local media energetic yeah. <laughs> energy that the, that was the, the word that kept coming to mind watching both of them the same way um, when we saw EJ Barthel and Evan Cooper uh, mm -hmm. before that the same when we saw Tony White definitely um, and Marcus Satterfield and you think the same thing about rule I feel mm -hmm. like everyone that we've seen so far and talked to has been someone that you would describe as high energy um, and it's really it, it that kind of dovetails nicely into the thing that was my big takeaway is this how competitive the staff is um, and Terrence Knighton mentioned that and it's it's both yeah. their the work ethic of the staff and also I think he also hit on the youth of the staff and the, mm -hmm. the collective youth on the staff um, also kind of lends itself for them being a little bit more competitive. I thought it was really interesting on how Foley talked about his role within that being one of the older guys in mm -hmm. the rooms. He went in his 50s now mm -hmm. uh, so he's an old man by standards of, of yeah. this room right or uh, of this group of, of coaches and so he talked really well about how yes he it's his duty to take on that type of mentorship role and to help those young coaches along but he's also learning from them as well. I thought that that was really neat that he talked about that too. Very cool that I think Rule is is creating an environment where he wants to bring in young, energetic, mm -hmm. and hungry assistants and have and be okay with them if they hit it right. if they hit it off well and they do a really good job. If they get an, another gig outside of Nebraska, I think I think Matt Rule is okay with yeah. that. And and you know I think uh, he trusts in his ability to not only identify talent on the field but off of it in the coaching ranks too. Um, so I, I'm just really excited to see where all this goes. Uh, but yeah, with Ed Foley getting back to the football talk, he talked a lot about special teams. I asked him about what he makes said a good. He would even come back to you yeah. to talk more about special teams. Yeah, yeah, like that, that. yeah that was awesome. But uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, he talked about what makes a good special teams return unit, like a re return on the uh, kickoffs and punt fi on, on punts. That was really um, interesting as well. He didn't want to get into what he saw in last year's tape, which I asked about, yeah. but you know, it, that was I thought smart... the follow-up was solid yeah. though. Yeah, you it, tried. Was. You it, tried. Was, it was. It was. I tried my to shoot my shot there, but uh, yeah. um, you know, I, I just think that he's going to be good for Nebraska special teams, and I didn't. we didn't get to ask him about Bob Wager, uh, the former Arlington Martin head coach for 17 seasons um, down there in Texas, but I think Bob, Bob Wager is going to have a, a, a hand in Nebraska special teams units as well, because if you talk to anybody who knows Bob Wager down in Texas they they always say the Arlington Martin Warriors the first thing that you notice is their special teams it was always top notch stuff uh, so with Ed Foley and Bob Wager helping things out um, on, on special teams I think Nebraska is going to be on the right trajectory, especially on the third phase of the game, the special teams. And, and I think that Foley mentioning too, and this is a great line about, you know, Coach um, Rule brought him there specifically to coach special teams, right? Mm -hmm. He had coached tight ends in, in previous spots with, with Matt Rule. And to have a dedicated special teams coach, that sends a message about how important special teams is going to be to Rule. And to mm -hmm. your point, to then have another guy on yep. staff um, and Bob Wager that has also had that 
be his specialty over his coaching career down in Arlington. I think that does really signal something. Um, there were there were a lot of actually really great lines. And the more that I think yeah. about it, the one about um, <laughs> he was asked, um, Foley was, about whether or not Nebraska would play starters on special teams. Mm -hmm. He said, quote, I like to stay employed, so I will do what coach wants me to do. Um, and then gave an actually really great answer about yeah. how that would end up being broken down. I encourage you uh -huh. uh, to check out that full video right here on our YouTube channel. But he did talk uh, very well about that as well. But flipping over to Knighton real fast, one of the things that kind of stood out to me um, to, about him was his talk about recruiting, the shocker here, mm -hmm. um, and about his travels of going around and being able to pitch, having recently been in the NFL, both as a player yeah. and as a coach, and how important that is to be able to use as a relator, a relatable piece um, to guys, and how important that is to kids. Um, and I think that all of them have found, and they've all mentioned this to varying degrees of the assistance that we've talked to, on what it's like to recruit as a, with that Nebraska in on your chest. And that yeah. Nebraska polo and hat hits a little bit differently than, say, Temple did when Ed Foley was at Temple. And you mentioned mm -hmm. that a little bit. No disrespect yeah. to Temple, but he yeah. did talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he, he's uh, born, in, born in New Jersey. He, he's been on kind of the northeast side of the country his whole life. And he just wasn't, wasn't like it because I think the professional sports scene is a lot bigger over yeah, there. Yeah, a lot different. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, he, was, it was kind of, he said it was eye-opening when he was going to all these small communities in Nebraska. And, it, you know, professional sports are all right, but here it's Nebraska football. Nebraska football is the professional sport. So, I mean, it was eye-opening for him, and he, he liked it. I think he can, you can tell that Ed Foley is excited about that, that um, part of this whole, this whole transition uh, with going from the Carolina Panthers and the Northeast to, to the Midwest. It's, it's kind of a slower pace, and I think Fed, Fed, uh, Ed Foley is used to. Um, but I think it's going to be good and everything. So yeah, very exciting. And I think that two of the one of the things that I wanted to also mention here, and, we, and it goes back to what you were saying about your question that you tried to slide in there about watching the special teams tape, yeah. because um, of course Terrence Knighton was asked a similar thing about mm -hmm. what he's seen from the defensive line so far. And I thought both of them, the same way that other coaches have done, struck a really good chord. There has been no talk at all about hey, you know, we've got to coach these guys up until we get our guys or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's all been what if they all basically said, we watched the tape. We saw guys that tried hard. We can work with that. Yeah, that's, they like what they really, got. Yeah, that, that they like mm -hmm. what they got. Now, whether or not they've continued to go out, obviously, as they have, and add a lot more scholarship players to the mm -hmm. group, um, and we definitely have seen that, um, what, 33, 34 guys that are coming in on scholarship this year as new players. Um, but it, it feels like they're also trying to not – you know, have a situation where it's uh, them and us, right? It's not going mm -hmm. to be the new guys that they recruited versus the guys that were already here. It's one big team, um, and that word family came up with Ed Foley yeah. as well. So I did that just kind of st stood out to me as something that these coaches are definitely on the same page when it comes to how they talk about and discuss the guys that they're inheriting and the whole team that they need to build up. It made me think of when Rule was talking about, remember his quote that said, that where he said, everybody's my guy. Like yeah. all, all, all of the players right now are my guy. Now, there's a lot of scholarship uh, t players on the, on <laughs> yeah. the roster right now, and, yeah. and his guys aren't going to be his guys at the end of spring because there's going to be some attrition. But yeah. um, I just think that it, it, it's a good thing for Nebraska to have that kind of competition um, and to go through a spring practice, 15 spring practices, with just competition galore and, and the cream will rise to the top and all that good stuff. So, um, But at the end of the day, I think you know whoever, whoever ends up being on the roster after spring practice, I mean, it's just going to be like a family-like atmosphere. It's almost like you guys made it. This is our... Mm -hmm. This is our, um, you're, you're my players, um, let's, let's tackle this thing. So um, just really exciting and, and I think another good day for Nebraska. With um, every, Anytime you can get these assistants out in front of local media, in front of microphones, yeah. it's going to sound good. And they've all been great. Like that's one of the things, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of weird to say from our point of view, but it, it, you kind of have to say it. It needs to be noted that I don't, I don't know, like we haven't talked to anyone yet. They're like, oh, man, I don't, I don't really know about that guy. Like yeah. they've all been they've what all you been hear runs. about. And maybe it yeah. helps. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it helps because I hear from the recruits' perspectives a lot mm -hmm. about what these guys are like. So then I'm, I'm always thinking in my mind, oh, it can't quite be the way that, you know, Ed Foley. I talked to Tristan Alvano, and he just yep. raves about Ed Foley um, and his ability to relate and really make him feel comfortable and at home when they came here on the, the couple visits. Jalen Lloyd, too. With the yeah, family. those guys yeah. did as well, like all of them. And so hearing them say it is one thing, but then when you see it in a press conference setting, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. When you saw Foley stand up there for 26 minutes yeah. and just kind of be able to shoot the breeze and talk about <laughs> You guys got somewhere to go? There. Yeah, he literally When he said, said, you guys that. got somewhere to go, we were like, oh boy, yeah, we're like, another Here we 10 go. minutes? And then I think the Mets talk came after yeah. that, or the anti-Mets talk, which is fascinating to me. Yeah. It's always fun about how people develop those types of, you know. Talked <laughs> about North hatred, Jersey yeah. and South Jersey yeah. and how there's a difference. I don't know. I'm from Nebraska, whatever. But yeah. like, what do I know? You learned something today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. You
you yeah. learn from Ed yeah. Foley. But yeah, that, it, it has been really interesting to see those guys in practice or see them in practice in front of microphones. And I think that seeing we still got a couple left to go. So hopefully we yep. get, you know, Garrett McGuire, Bob Lager is somebody I know the people on our insiders board um, mm -hmm. have definitely been asking about. Oh, they yeah. want to hear from him. And I think a lot of people around the state want to hear from him, given his reputation, mm -hmm. especially down in Texas with high school football. But we'll have plenty more to come with that. Um, we'll also have plenty more from today's events. Uh, Steve will have a, a deeper dive into what Ed Foley had to say. Got some stuff up on Terrence Knight and as well. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, signing day is just around the corner in a couple days. So we'll continue to have more coverage of that as Nebraska looks to finish off the 2023 class strong. And we will catch you guys next time.